Hi. That was so good. And Jody kind of preached my message so we could just go eat now. <laughs> Literally covered a couple. Uh, so that's awesome. Um, you know, my comfort zone is teaching children. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, when I was asked to do this, I had to like go. But it's been something that the Lord has kind of said, okay, get out of your comfort zone and do this. So, you know, but when you teach children, you don't have eye contact much. <laughs> you don't have much attention. So, in fact, one time my daughter Lindsay was going to take um, a kids' church for me because I had like been back there for a long time, you know, without a break. And so she was like, I'll do one, Mom. So, I, and this was probably like 15 years ago, I was like, sounds good. You know, I, I said, I'm going to prepare you a little bit. And so I took a chair. And I sat on it, and I was the child, and I said, now you tell me a Bible story. And so while she's telling the Bible story, I kind of slithered off the chair, <laughs> put my feet up on the chair, and she's going, Mom, I am so sure, you know. And then, honestly, after that day, she comes running to me with her big eyes and goes, Mom, somebody was in that exact position. <laughs> I said, see, I told you. <laughs> so that's what I'm used to. So, you know, feel free to slither. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. I feel right at home now. And, you know, I appreciate all the eye contact and the, you know, attention span and everything that I'm going to find here today with you guys. So it's a brand new experience for me. Thank you. Um, so we're going to go with our... Oh, I pushed the wrong button already. I think I turned it off. Oh, yeah. Here's our main. I can do it this way. Oh, nice. OK. Thank you. I'll take all the help I can get today. So this is kind of um, the verse that really exploded in my heart. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I'm just so thankful that this life is supposed to be, by God, designed to have joy. Uh, you know, um, okay, I'm pushing my little button and it's not working. It was before. What did I do? Oh, did it? Okay. So, um, it, this is, looks like an odd picture to have at the beginning here, but... Um, we, ha we, have this we had this home that we rented for 10 years that was large, and it had this front yard filled with maple trees. And every October, these you know there would be a day, it seemed like in overnight, all these leaves would fall. <laughs> and we had this insurmountable task of cleaning the yard. But we have five children, and so we use that to our advantage in this situation, and we bought <laughs> more rakes than what's in that first picture. We each had a rake. And we would declare one of the days coming up. You know, we'd pick this Saturday. And you guys, OK, next Saturday is family raking day. And um, this family raking day would get groans from a couple of the kids and joy with a couple of the other ones. And primarily Abby, our youngest. Now, she is the most sentimental of all of our kids and also enjoys, you know, a good time. And so, and she was the youngest. But family raking day right now to her, she looks back on this and it's like the most cherished family childhood memory of us all being together and working together and doing this giant project, you know, of cleaning our yard. And so what we... There was this little um, show that she watched called The Backyardigans. And there was this one silly song. They had, um, it's racing day. And so they would sing, it's racing day, it's racing day, racing day, racing day. It's not sausage casing day. <laughs> Today is the day we race. And so we would laugh at that song because it was so ridiculous. Like they were really stressed out for a rhyme there, you know, <laughs> sausage casing day. So we took that song, and with Family Raking Day, we said, it's raking day, it's raking. And then each family member would kind of take a turn coming up with a, 
a verse and a, you know, a better rhyme with breaking. So it, we made it a lot of fun. And um, still there were a couple who would, oh my gosh, family raking day, you know. It was not fun for them. But Abby was thrilled. And as I said, it, it, it turned out to be one of her childhood highlights, you know. And so today I just submit to you that God wants us to enjoy life on the same level that Abby enjoyed family raking. <laughs> So, it's an invitation to joy, and there she is. And yeah, we took time, you know, to have those piles of leaves, too, that we would rake, and she'd get to jump in them a little bit. So it wasn't just sheer pure work, and we had the song. And so that's something I feel like God is speaking to our hearts, that there is an invitation to joy, that there is joy that's meant to be in our lives, in our daily tasks, our things that seem insurmountable, things that are hard, you know, there's joy. So what is the definition of joy? The world has a definition and the Bible has a definition. This is the world's definition, the dictionary definition. The feeling of great pleasure or happiness that comes from success, good fortune, or a sense of well-being. So, you know, we think of this, a great pleasure, a success. Um, Ed and I play this little game, Boggle, with friends. And, you know, you have your phone and you take your turn. And I usually win. <laughs> We're very competitive. And he beats me at everything else in life. I know. <clears throat> you know, he beats me at Scrabble. He beats me at everything else. But this game, I got him on <laughs> I'd say like, you know, 80, 90% of the time I'm the winner. And there's this little fleeting joy here. And then the next time he'll win. And, you know, it's over. So that, that kind of success, it's temporary. You know, that what the world defines as joy. There isn't a lasting, you know, deep well behind that. <laughs> it's something fleeting. However... We'll go on to the next one. Biblical joy, and we've got kind of four, um, four things. There's more, you know, this is not exhaustive. These are the things that popped out to me as I was praying and reading and, and learning about joy. Um, it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's a calm assurance. We're going to talk about each one of these a little more. A permanent hope and a deliberate response or posture. Let's go to the next one, which is the fruit of the Spirit. And this is... Galatians 5.22, the, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And you notice that it's mentioned second. It's pretty high on the list here. You know, um, in the Bible, the Word of God, depending on which translation you look at, but it mentions joy over 400 times. It must be important to the Lord, you know. He, he mentions it a lot. So um, we'll go to the next one here. So when we think of fruit, you know, it, we think of um, that God set up a system of seed time and harvest. Trees bear fruit. We can't create the tree. We can't create the fruit, but we are responsible to cultivate. So we cultivate our soil by spending time with Jesus. And Bill Johnson had this quote that all fruit grows through abiding, not striving. He, you know, God is the producer of the fruit of joy in our life. But we have to position ourselves and cultivate our soil and, and um, receive the gift. You know, it's the same in so many areas of our life with receiving things from God, even salvation. He's provided it for everybody, but you have to receive it. And there is a posture, there's a position where we can live and walk in joy, you know. So um, we can go to the next one here, I believe. This is another um, quote that I came across in looking up things about the fruit of the Spirit that I thought was pretty amazing. You know, Graham Cook, and I don't know much about him, so I'm just going off this quote, but... He said that God has given a fruit of his spirit for every negative circumstance of life. He allocates his personality to us to be able to be a blessing to those around us. He said how, you know, we encounter this world and there is negativity. There, there are things that we, you know, are crazy that we are facing. 
And um, it's kind of in our fleshly nature to be, you know, put up like defensive posture and to be, you know, argumentative or angry about all this stuff. But instead of that spirit, God has given us his personality through the fruits of his spirit to be a blessing and to love people, you know, and to, and to have joy in life. Um, it's a blessing to people around you when you're happy, when you're joyful, right? You know, as opposed to being miserable or down or it's just, it's a blessing to those around us. So God gives us that. And I love that quote. Um, biblical joy is a calm assurance. And, um, in Romans 15, is that 15? <laughs> 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a sense, we could go to the next slide too, because I think, I, yeah, that joy and peace really go hand in hand. True joy, it carries a peace with it. It's a kind of a grounding part of joy that it's not just hilarity and, you know, highs and lows. It's it's kind of steadies us. It's that peace and that joy that um, are, represent true joy from God. We can go to the next one now. <laughs> a permanent hope. I love this verse. You know, doesn't this hope give us so much to look forward to, so much joy for our future? The ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. We have that hope of heaven. We have that, we used to sing that song too, right, Jody? <laughs> Did any of you sing that song? No? Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return. Yeah, yeah, it's a good oldie. So um, we can go to the next one. It is also a deliberate response or posture. And here's Philippians 4.4 4 in a couple different versions. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Rejoice is the verb of joy. You know? And then the next, the, uh, the TPT, Passion Translation. Be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let your joy overflow. How do we do this? You know, what is... <laughs> How do we do this? We're going to look at that. But what is the importance of joy? Um, let's look at some Bible verses that tell us what the importance of joy is. Nehemiah 8.10. He said, Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And Jody mentioned this in worship today. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, you look at something insurmountable, natural, like family raking day, that huge yard and all those leaves. There's a lot of effort that would go into that. There's a lot of strength that would be needed. But when there's joy infused in these things, you know, in our lives, in the tasks of our life, when we have joy, it is our strength. And the joy of the Lord is so much deeper than a silly song on family raking day. But um, I can go to the next. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy. Again, in Colossians here, we see this, um, you know, this hand in hand is strength and joy, that we are strengthened with his glorious power so that we have all endurance and patience. May you be filled with joy. So, God wants to fill us with his joy so we can, you can go on. Looking unto Jesus, and this is what Jody also mentioned. Now, if Jesus, we'll read this, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, if Jesus use joy <laughs> if he needed joy if joy was instrumental in the life of jesus in enduring what he had to go through how much more you know do we need joy and we face some hard things in this life you know each one of us has our own story and we've whether people know about it or don't know about it every one of us has faced some really tough situations and 
we have the author and finisher of our faith who has joy set before us and helps us to endure and helps us, you know, make it through those. He never leaves us or forsakes us. There is in his presence his fullness of joy. We're going to go on to that too. But a joyful, cheerful heart brings healing to both body and soul. This is, we're talking about the importance of joy. A joyful, cheerful heart brings healing to both body and soul. But the one whose heart is crushed struggles with sickness and depression. We see a connection here between joy and health and healing. And the Lord wants to keep us in this place of expectation and this place of joy where we fix our gaze on him and above the circumstances. Because circumstances can really bring us down and really rob us of that joy. But we have something to look at. We have a hope that's higher than the circumstances. And we have a focus. We have a gaze. We can go to the next one here. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. That doesn't really, you know, sound logical. <laughs> for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, which means mature. I had to put that in there so nobody thought you had to be perfect because that would eliminate all of us <laughs> needing nothing or wanting nothing. Um, yeah, you can go on to that next one. Um, these are some quotes from Mark and Trina Hankins who... Um, are some Bible teachers, and we we kind of we know them and know their family, and they've been a blessing. And we have seen them um, receive these phenomenal miracles in their family. I mean, Trina was diagnosed with like a brain tumor, and um, she was healed. They had a grandson who had leukemia, and he was healed. They had a sister and a brother-in-law who were literally on their deathbed. And they were healed. And so they've walked through some things and they've had some miracles in their life. And these are some quotes that they have. Joy is one of the great secrets of faith. Joy is the bridge between believing and receiving. And your celebration, which is the verb, the act of joy, which is rejoicing, is a demonstration of your revelation and your expectation. So to dig a little deeper into that, what that means is that, you know, as we put God's word in our heart and as we feast on his promises and as we hold those truths and those things in front of our eyes, at some point as we keep doing it, as we keep on, it drops and it's a revelation. And when that comes alive, there is a joy attached to it, even if your circumstances look completely opposite from what you see in the spirit. Because, you know, there's the kingdom of God, and then there's this natural kingdom. And obviously what we see is this natural kingdom. You know, and so we see the natural things that we are fighting, and that they're all around us, and they're screaming loudly. It takes some effort to lift your eyes. You know, to put God's word in front of us, to get it in our heart, to have our hope and our expectation in those things. But when we do, there's a place that we can live where there's joy. So we can go on to the next one. Who is our, where is our source of joy? I'm trying to find me on my notes here. There we are. Okay. So the source of joy. Number one, our Savior. You know, this is the beginning of Jesus coming onto the scene in the Word of God. First thing the angel says, good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. There is joy attached to. This is the Messiah that these people had been praying for and waiting for. Talk about waiting. Talk about endurance. Oh my goodness. You know, and they were in such bondage. 
here was their answer. Here's their freedom. Here's their hope. Here's their joy. He's bursting onto the scene. And he still is for us. He's here, you know. We've got him. We've got what they've been, they were waiting for for so many years, our Savior. His presence. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So his presence, spending time, whether it's in worship here, you know, I like to go on walks and talk to the Lord. I love nature, too, and seeing his beauty. It's a little tougher right now. <laughs> but it's beautiful when we drive around, and it's not treacherous, and it's a freshly fallen snow. But it declares his glory, doesn't it? It declares his glory, and we can, we can f- just enjoy his presence in, in wherever we are. Um, let's go to the next. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And this should say his word because he gave us his word. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. That is the word of God right there. Yeah. Praise God for his word. Um, so we can, how do we tap in to this joy. Okay, we've said we've seen the importance of joy, we've seen that God has joy for us, but how do we tap into it? What are, what can we do? Number 1, we can worship. In Psalm 102, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him singing with joy. And worship does something powerful. I mean, it does a lot of things, and like I said, I Anything I'm saying isn't exhaustive today. There's a lot more, but it's the tip of the iceberg. Um, But one thing we do as we worship, we are fixing our gaze uh, in heaven and into the kingdom of God and on the one who is sufficient, on the one who can handle all these things that we're trying to figure out in our own strength. No, we fix our gaze, our hope, where our help comes from. We put it up there. And as we do that, and as we focus on him, there's just automatically joy. There's joy. And his presence, there's just nothing like it. There's nothing like it. My favorite, most amazing moments in life, and I've had some good things that have happened in the natural, but they're in the presence of God. They're in his presence. Feeling, sensing his love, sensing that joy well up inside of you. There's nothing like it. Nothing can compare to it. You know, people try to chase these, all these earthly things to, to get that. And it's in him. It's in him. C.S. Lewis had a quote, something like, I, you know, I wonder if all the pleasures of earth are not substitutes for joy. You know, the joy that the Lord has for us. That the things that we reach for, you know, whether it's addictions or food or, you know, all the things. It's the satisfaction, that fulfillment is in him. It's in his presence. It's in his joy. So his promises. This verse in the Passion Translation is amazing. Your promises are the source of my bubbling joy. The revelation of your word thrills me like one who has discovered hidden treasure. And sometimes we need to go on a treasure hunt for things in our life. Um, You know, I heard... I think one of our Bible school teachers said, you know, what part of the word do I need? What should I focus on? And, you know, you're led by the Spirit, but then if there's things you're believing God for that you know it's God's will for this to be happening and this is what's happening, then that's your medicine. That, though, that word in that specific area is your medicine. And as you take his word, as you get those promises in your heart, They're the source of my bubbling joy. The revelation of your word thrills me like one who has discovered hidden treasure. You find those verses that pertain to your life, and there is something, joy is connected with that. So thankfulness. This is another big way we can tap into joy. 
And there's a little song, thankful heart is a happy heart. Veggie tales. But it's true. Um, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. You know, we have this um, saying, I think, that we all say, probably like the simple joys of life. or <laughs> And there's little things that we might all have that are different. Um, th I have this one little funny thing that every day, so... Well, it's two. It's a two-part funny thing. This Jeannie Demers makes this raspberry jelly, and I think now at this point in her life, she makes it only for me and my family, <laughs> because right at Christmas time, she gave us like I don't know, it was like forty jars or something. Wow. Don't ask me for any though, because <laughs> it's my joy. <laughs> okay, it's my simple joy. No, but um, it. Every morning, you know, and I've been doing, I've, it, it, if you haven't noticed, it's okay because it's been going so slow. But since Easter, I've lost 30 pounds on Weight Watchers. However, I have her jelly every morning and I account for it. <laughs> it is the best thing, her raspberry jam in the world. And so I, I have my little one half slice of my piece of toast, peanut butter and Jeannie's jelly every morning with a cup of coffee yeah. and it's a simple joy it's just a little thing and now i have this little dog romeo which you know i was the one saying oh do we need a dog <laughs> you know we we had a dog been there done that and that dog had a lot of health problems and and a lot of issues but so we got romeo who's strong and healthy and full of energy but every morning <clears throat> he sleeps with whitney um, and so he hears me get up and make the coffee, and he waits till the toast pops up. He hears it through the wall. He, I hear, boom, he jumps out of the bed and click, 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 you know, down the steps. And he usually times it right about where I'm sitting in my devotion chair with my cup of coffee, my little piece of toast with Jeannie's jelly, and he'll sit there and waiting, waiting, waiting. And I give him the last bite every day and so he is so patient now at first he wasn't and i'd be like you know stop now he'll sit there and he'll start to <laughs> drool <laughs> he gets he gets a bite this big but that whole process gives me a little joy you know it's just it's just this sweet little thing every morning you know not only do i get my favorite jelly that i like i said don't ask it don't ask me for any because it's one thing I'm not very generous. I do give it to my kids, but anyway. So, but you know what God showed me about these simple joys? I feel like this was a little revelation from him because we can think, oh, they're petty and, you know, I shouldn't get my heart on these. Or, but when they're connected to thankfulness, it's, it's part of joy of, of the Lord because when we realize their place, like he's the author, he, you know, he, every good and perfect gift comes from God. So even though Jeannie gives me that jelly, it's really from God. <laughs> and I thank him for that, these little things. And as we acknowledge these little things, being thankful for them and appreciative and thanking the Lord for them, you know, those little things are part of our worship to God. And they're part of the joy that he has for us in life. So they're not just stupid little things. <laughs> um, trust. And this is a big one, too, to trust him. Um, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. I'm so thankful that we don't have to make everything happen on our own that we can trust him. Because when we try to do things in our own strength, it is a heavy yoke. It is not joyful. It is hard. You know, I've heard somebody say, so every time you're feeling frustrated in life, you are trying to do something in your own strength. Yeah. You're not trusting the Lord. And um, I have to remind myself of that a lot. You know, when I get frustrated about something, Ah, you're doing it in your own strength again. And his yoke is easy and his burden is light. It doesn't mean that we don't have work. But just like family raking day, we have joy with it. You know, We have our side that we do. And we have our part of cultivating soil 
and and doing what in positioning ourselves and putting his word before our eyes but um there's a trust in him that brings joy and you know i was going to tell this little this little thing too that i kind of missed but on my walks there are you know, I have these prayer walks sometimes when it's not 40 below wind chill. <laughs> but, um, and I just love to, to be able to just be out in nature with the Lord and talking out loud. You know, people might drive by and think, oh, she's just a little strange, but it's okay. Um, but there's been things in my life, you know, some things I've prayed for, believed for, you know, and seen the answer to it. And it's praise God, you know, woohoo, that prayer has been answered. Then there's things that I've had for years and decades that I've been praying for, that I'm standing for, that I am contending for, that I keep before the Lord. And I have to trust him with those things. And, you know, a few weeks ago, I was on a prayer walk. And um, it's actually what completely prompted this message because um, I was praying over some of these things that, Lord, I, I haven't seen yet. But I felt the Lord say to me, prophesy over those things. Yeah. Prophesy my word over those areas. You know, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to prophesy. You know, I thought of the Ezekiel things with prophesying life over the dead bones, you know, that God told him to do that, and those bones lived. So as I was walking, I began to prophesy over the, some of those situations. And what happened, I, I didn't see the miraculous, you know, manifestation of it immediately. However, I tapped into this wellspring of joy that I can't describe. It was like nothing I have ever experienced this joy that was connected to the things that are the worst in my life. Because I believe, I believe that God's word is true and I believe he's working it and he's got it. And when I tapped into that joy, it gave me strength and it gave me this fresh vision. It gave me hope. And I just want to encourage you guys, whatever it is, you know, it's not too hard for God. And he's got it, and we need to trust him. And we can trust him because he's faithful. We can look at what he's done in the past, and we can believe he'll do it again. All right, forgiveness. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt. And forgiveness, this is two ways. Forgiveness that we receive, that we, you know, if we have a sense of guilt and shame, it really makes it hard to have joy because we just feel bad about ourselves all the time. And, you know, we hear about mom guilt or different guilt or whatever. God doesn't want us walking around with guilt. And he's made a way. The blood of Jesus is enough, whatever it was, whatever it is that you're dealing with, it's enough. We can let go of that thing. We can receive his forgiveness and we can have the joy that he has for us just by receiving what he's done and knowing that we are righteous because of the blood of Jesus. We're clean, we're spotless, we're precious daughters of God. And then the next slide, forgiveness goes the other way too, where look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. We need to give that forgiveness away too. <laughs> right? I mean, the soil of unforgiveness in our hearts or bitterness, it doesn't grow good fruit. And the fruit of the joy... You know, the fruit of the spirit of joy is not going to be produced in a heart that's full of bitterness and strife and resentment and anger. And, you know, Carrie Brandt has honestly been like an icon to me for joy. And look at all the things she's gone through in life. And there's just this joy that radiates from her, Carrie, and it yeah. blesses us. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And she walks in forgiveness. You know, she walks in love. She... Um, you're a good role model. <laughs> um, 
And then lastly, giving. This is another way we can tap into joy. I watched this little, um, I don't know if any of you guys saw this over, I thought of Heidi with this one, but um, there was this like fifth grade class, I think, that um, their teacher had um, told them about some secret Santa stuff where they would give away money in um, stores. And these kids got excited and watched a couple videos of this man who had given money away to people in need during Christmas time. And so he, these kids decided, we want to do that. Our class wants to do that. That looks fun. So they raised money in the community. It was like $8,000. And they went to, they had hundreds of dollars in their hands. <laughs> and they went to these different places on different days and and gave it out to people that maybe were in need. Well, these the stories that came out of this were just phenomenal. There were like people that had been diagnosed with cancer that week, you know, and were down to their last 20 bucks and you know, just all this incredible stuff and the people would break down and cry as these children were giving them money and the kids would cry. And at the end, they were interviewed, and um, you know, they said, Would, could you have ever imagined giving money away like that? And they were like, no. Like, every time I had money, I'm like, I want that money, you know? And, um, but this one little girl, she was like the littlest of them all, she said, their response, their joy was my gift. Aww. You know, she said, it was such a gift to me, and she said, I want to keep doing it. And it was such a tangible little, you know, representation of the joy of giving. And it's not just money I'm talking about, but, you know, helping people, putting your focus on someone else instead of your own troubles, because we can get so focused on all of our stuff and it just leads to sadness, depression, you know, not fulfilling what God's called us to do. And it's, there's nothing wrong with needing prayer. There's nothing wrong, you know. We can go to extremes and all of these things, but there is an element of giving that brings joy. And God wants us to be part of his great master plan of giving to those around us. So that's about all I got. <laughs> but um, yes, this is um, a, a quote from Mother Teresa. She said, a joyful heart is the inevitable result of a heart burning with love. And she laid down her lives, life for people, you know, and gave and helped. And, and she had a joyful heart in it because that love. So maybe we could just pray, or you want to pray over our food and stuff, so. No, I want you to pray. But okay. Just, yeah. Anybody have any comments? Yeah. So if you want to just stay up there. But also, or, I want to say this. <laughs> Not even close, but it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.